Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, AMD gives more details on Ryzen 3D, RTX 3000 Super Release, Intel's new GPU crushes AMD and Nvidia's best, and say goodbye to AMD APUs. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD recently discussed their upcoming 3D stacking technology at this year's Hot Chips event. For those who don't know, AMD is set to use the technology in their upcoming Ryzen CPUs as sort of a stopgap until we get to Zen 4, and those are set to begin mass production towards the end of this year. Either way, the company went over more details about their upcoming tech. First up, they actually discussed their plans for the future of the technology, which is pretty incredible. Not only will they stack DRAM onto the CPU, but even a CPU on top of a CPU, to eventually get to where they can literally slice circuits and continue them on a stacked die. Of course, that's just the future. Currently, AMD's through silicon vias with micro bumps offer over 3 times the interconnect energy efficiency and over 15 times the density when compared to just using micro bumps. Interestingly, AMD's hybrid tech puts it at a 9 micron pitch, while Intel's future Favros Direct is slightly less than 10, so AMD's upcoming stacking technology is set to be ahead of Intel's. Let's just say AMD's future looks bright. But first, if you're looking for a top-of-the-line custom gaming PC that's hand-built by a professional, look no further than today's sponsor. Digital Storm. The veteran PC builders with over 20 years of experience, and it shows. From the emails they send documenting each stage of the build process to the seriously impressive packaging, Digital Storm knows what they're doing. Plus, they offer a ton of options for every enthusiast, from custom water cooling to even sleeved cables, and it's basically just plug and play. Digital Storm installs everything you need and tests it all out before shipping. Oh, and every build comes with life time support, one year parts warranty, and three years labor. So take the guesswork out of PC building by visiting the link in the description below. Next up, we have an update on the leaked RTX 3000 supercards from Nvidia. Remember that we originally heard from a known leaker as well as video cards, plus a mistake from Lenovo that RTX 3000 supercards were at least coming to notebooks. Well, according to a new video from Red Gaming Tech, those cards are set for release at CES of next year, which means we should be getting a release of Intel's GPUs then, as well as Nvidia's refresh cards, at least for Notebook, to which I'll get to desktop in a second. As far as performance, Red Gaming Tech sources claim around just 5-10% to performance increase over non-super cards. So we're not talking a huge performance jump or anything like that, or really even as good as the 20 super cards were. When it comes to desktop cards, Red Gaming Tech Source claims that we will probably get a super refresh there as well. He's also hearing similar performance, but hopefully we'll also get, say, more memory or something like that to make the upgrade at least somewhat worth it. Time, as always, will tell. Next up for today, we have another really big story from Intel's Architecture Day. This time, the company released some current performance numbers of their A0 Silicon 2 stack Ponte Vecchio. For those who don't know, their A0 stepping would be the first run of the CPU after tape out, meaning an early prototype that, according to Tech Power Up, is likely circulating within Intel and an exclusive group of ISVs. So, this is a very early sample. We're talking 1.37 GHz. Either way, with just this part, Intel is claiming to have gotten over 45 teraflops of FP32 compute. What's so interesting about that is that it crushes Nvidia's A100 part at 19.5 teraflops and AMD's MI100 at 23.1. With that said, the A0 stepping is rumored to pull 600 watts, which is significantly higher than AMD or Nvidia, but it's clear that Intel is coming in strong. I mean, these are huge numbers that nearly double the performance of AMD's MI100 and over double that of Nvidia's A100. Intel's Ponte Vecchio is impressive, and it's just on their A0 part, so things should get quite a bit better before release. Of course, remember that AMD is set to ship their MI200 parts, which should be at least double their MI100, so things could very much change really soon. And lastly for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that I've been covering a roadmap that slowly leaked out over many months. 
and not too long ago, it was revealed that Raphael, which is the code name for AMD's Zen 4 based CPUs, so we're talking the 5 nanometer parts after the 3D chips, would come with an RDNA 2 integrated GPU. Think AMD's APUs, but this is their normal CPU lineup. Either way, it was apparently correct, as the recent leaks from Gigabyte confirm it. Now, before I get to the information, I will say that I won't be sharing any links to the original documents as there may be trade secrets that shouldn't be shown. I'm really only going over this because it's already all over the news. Anyway, the news comes from a compatibility chart for Socket AM5, and as you can see, it lists three types of processors, and each one comes with on-chip graphics. Of course, it doesn't show whether it's Vega, RDNA, RDNA 2, or what. But given the leaked roadmap called such a big reveal, it likely is RDNA 2. Interestingly, the document reportedly states that some OPNs may not support GFX, meaning similar to Intel's F lineup, some CPUs could be offered with the iGPU disabled. So AMD is likely using bin parts that had an issue with their iGPU, so they disabled it and that would put AMD's next-gen CPUs better in line with Intel's. At the end of the day, this really could be huge, because it would likely mean the end of AMD's APU lineup. At least the lineups like their G parts and separating their APUs from CPUs, it would probably all just be CPUs. The only thing I could think is that AMD could release more powerful iGPUs with their APUs? I don't know. But either way, their defining factor, the integrated GPU, won't be exclusive to APUs anymore. So there isn't really a big reason for AMD to further the lineup. So while that does it for today, are you excited for AMD's next-gen CPUs or are you more interested in Intel's GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!